Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming out. It's so far away from the city, but yeah, we had to do something different, you know? Let me show you inside, though. Yes, sir. <laughs> the bush bush. Yeah, you, want you want some coffee or tea? Uh, or I will take a coffee. Caffeine? Yeah. After that drive, I know. Yeah, that was a <laughs> nice drive down here. I'm a city kid, so this is a little uh, bit different for me, you know? I feel the same. I like the vibe out here, though. This is... The air is different. Yeah, I, I see that you're in your... your in your zen mode right now, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Like meditated this morning, just like, you know, try to take a moment. Cause like, like you said, city kid, always mm -hmm. on the go, traveling, just like super active. Yeah, yeah this must be a nice, a nice place for, to get some thinking going on, you know what I mean? Yeah, I tried to do a couple of these, like not specifically Happy. this, but like just the calm vibes. Mm -hmm. when I was working on the project, and I feel like that's what allowed me to even create yeah. an album, you know? So, oh, gotta nice. do it again, like, post drop, you know? Oh, I love it, I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm loving this. This is a very relaxing, tranquil scene. A good place for us to get a good conversation going on. Is there a movie-esque? Yeah. Uh -huh. Last time, and speaking of movie-esque, like, I was watching the TV, and I was watching your Juno performance, which was amazing, by the way. Thank you, I appreciate that. Take me through the, the, the thought process, everything that was going through your mind leading up to that performance and then hitting that stage. Yeah, I felt like I was nominated as well, so I felt like the night was already a win for me, like to be nominated and then to get to perform. I felt like that allowed me to like validate the nomination because I felt like, yeah, people might have questions, or maybe not have heard of me. So I'm like, you yeah. know, like, why does this body of work deserve to be acknowledged in this way? I felt like the performance gave me the opportunity to prove that. Mm -hmm. you know, at least a little, you know, a couple minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, I was just excited to do that. Occupy the stage, have all black dancers, like, you know, just like, and make, make a statement because it was like protest music that I was mm -hmm. performing at that time. So yeah, it's just, I like taking up space. Yeah. yeah. And this new album, or the latest album, Crying Crystal. Yes, sir. Give me the, 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 the title. How did you come up with this title, or what's the meaning behind that title? Crying Crystals, yeah. So it's basically a breakup album, essentially. Um, mm. It's like the process of going through a breakup, starting with kind of like the downfall. And then that upturn of like being able to like validate yourself, not needing that second opinion, not needing that second person, um, and all the crying, the pain, the turmoil, the strife, whatever you want to call it. Kind of like you can convert those tears into crystals. You, you know, they solidify into crystals and that mm -hmm. being the manifestation point of like where I feel like I am now. Yeah. So Crying Crystals is like, you know, it's like a glow up album, you know, yeah. but very much highlighting the, you know, very much highlighting the breakup and that being like a quintessential, is that a word? I think so. Yeah. Quintessential moment for me, like a pivotal moment of like, yo, like there's so much reliance here. There's this codependence here. You know what I mean? And like, mm -hmm. I changed a lot in the last six months to a year, like, you know, based on this project. So, yeah, I, I, I can see the growth because even with the, the, the subject matters on the, the subject matter on the album, you didn't usually get into relationships. So this is like a full relationship album. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's what makes this project unique for me. Mm -hmm. Is a lot of my projects before have been observatory in nature. Like yeah. looking at my external, whatever, what I think about society or my perception or like what's happening to my people, like those sorts of observations and then reflecting them sonically, like putting that in music. But this project was much more going within and like, okay, what am I going through? What is happening in my life? What are the emotions that I'm feeling? Like, how am I processing it? Like, this project is so much more personal, which is, I guess, a newer avenue for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's so dope. Continuing on the album, can you technically say that this might be a coming out album? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Take me through the thought process, even like you're starting the studio, like the beginning of the tunnel to making this album, because we're in this hip hop game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's so much judgment in the game and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Once you started cutting those tracks now, mm. were you afraid? Were you nervous? 
Yeah, I guess I was, but it's interesting. Like, I feel like the first song, the fr all of the songs that I was making leading up to this project were themed around what I was going through. Mm -hmm. So I guess I felt like I didn't really have a choice. Yeah. Like, I was scared, but like, it was reflecting what was happening in my life. Like, I was coming to terms with mm -hmm. who I was. I was identifying, like, publicly, like, okay, like, cause feelings are feeling, you know? Yeah. I feel my feelings. And like, yeah, like, Music is where I'm able to be the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So to like not be able to talk about those sorts of things in music was like just, I don't know, like an oxymoron. Like it had, yeah. it had to happen. So and mm -hmm. I'm also, you know, Caribbean, you know, I'm Jamaican, Bayesian. So yeah. there's even that internal conflict. There's like, what is so-and-so going to think conflict? There's, um, yeah, a lot of worries and concerns. But I do think like being true to self definitely like was more important than, and is more important than all of those concerns. I still have those concerns yeah. sometimes, you know? No, but listen, I, I commend you, you know? I, I, I love to see even just the growth and the, you just getting more personal with the music, right? Was it therapeutic? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even like doing stuff like this, I feel like, I don't know, I was just like such a city kid. I never like cared about meditating or like, these types of cottage views that you know yeah. usually we're not privy to like i wasn't thinking about that or stretching in the morning like i'd be doing all that stuff now like setting your intentions for the day affirmations like these are mm. things that like i wasn't affording myself and i was on the road busy like you know doing all this stuff and wrapped up in life and i feel like one of my most therapeutic things that led to me being able to make this music was like really like finding center I had to ground myself. I had to stop trying to answer questions that I would never have the answers to. Why did this happen? Blah, blah, blah. Like I had to calm myself and be like, okay, you're never gonna know what matters right now. Like what yeah. is the, you know? And in order to determine like, yo, bring myself back to the music. Authentically, like I had to center and I tried meditating and I saw the value of like sitting in silence or like I bought a house and like I, like I moved, I, I lived with my family my whole life. Mm. You know, I learned what it was like to really like be alone. Have like, silence. Yeah, real, real silence. And like also real responsibility. And like, yeah, it's just kind of like, you know, you're doing like a life thing. It's like, you got to figure it out. You can't ask somebody every time you have a question, how am I going to do this? How am I going to figure this out? Like you just kind of throw yourself at the wall. Like, and I did my, I did that after this situation because yeah, all this codependency and relying on just like the concept of, an, of another person. It's not even about the person. It's the concept of like needing anything else that bad. Yeah. That's not you. And I feel like I was able to break that. Now I realized like, and learned how to rely on self. And then also, you know, I got the team back here, you know, Drew on BTS, you know, like reaching out to community so we can have a conversation. Like mm -hmm. it's still a, not about doing it alone. Right. But like, there's a healthy way to do it. And yeah, the only way to sustain in this game, I think, is to have like a proper team around you that really cares about you, but like you still are like the leader of your shit. You know, you have, yeah. to, you have to help guide people on where you want to go. It's your brand, your music, your story, your da 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 da. Like, if you're unclear on that, nobody can help you. Yeah. The only way to do this authentically is to know yourself. Yeah. And you know, like. And only you will know your story. Right. And I didn't before this project. Even I was kind of like confused because I'm like, I honestly hadn't come to terms with versions of myself. Like, I wasn't okay with the fact that I felt like I identified differently than like what is hip, hip hop acceptable. Yeah. Right. I wasn't internally okay with that, and I wasn't aware that I wasn't okay with that. I just kind of, like, when I was younger, I tried to do the, like, I tried to do what I felt like a female rapper should do. Like, I tried to conform to what it is to be a woman. I like would try to bring my tone up, like mm -hmm. rap tonally higher, or like rap about like relationships with men, and like only like process that. You're right. And it was through this relationship, this, these feelings that I was like, okay, like, you know, this is, this is why I'm like, what? you're not, you, you know, that changes your identity, it right? It does. You know? It does. Yeah. It's really on relationship and, and, and that, that's the last thing I'm asking on relationships, right? Yeah. From the breakup, what did you learn as far as like moving forward for your own growth? Going through that entire situation, like I went on the opposite end of like not needing anybody, and now I became super vulnerable mm -hmm. to this person who like understood me because nobody else knew. Like nobody else could see that side of me. You know what right, I'm saying? So right. only they did, and it made me so vulnerable and so like the opposite of that energy that I've always had. 
it taught me, first of all, that anybody could lose their way, you know? Like, I felt like that could never be me. That would never be me. And then it was me, you know what you I'm saying? you get hit with that love bomb. Yo, fam, <laughs> like, yo, weak. Um, and that's what made this album, like, creating this album so therapeutic. And that's what I learned, like, like the power of the mind. If you believe you could get through it, like, you could, you, you could get through anything. Like, you really could get through anything. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, for the first time in my life, like, you know, in, in this big, empty place, you know, smoking a spliff, like, on the floor, <laughs> like, nobody, like, no, I had to get a cat because there was nobody, like, just by yourself. And, mm -hmm. like, I also, like, committed to the challenge. It's like, you can go out, you can go to the bar, go to the pub, you can hit us with shorties, like, you yeah. can do whatever. But, like, I committed to the silence. And like just like sat with these emotions until they didn't run my thoughts anymore. Until mm -hmm. I started like, mm, like yo, this bar. Uh, if I said this and this, this, oh yo, I got this beat from this. Like it went from, well, why did they do this? And like, what, what does that say about me? And like, what kind of person does that make me? To like, how does the bar sound if I say it like this? Or like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it also happened faster than I thought it could. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of it, I was like, yo, super lost, you know? Like, yeah. this is never going to stop hurting. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it was, it was. It stops. It's funny, because like when I think about it, there's a part of me that is embarrassed, you know? There's a part of me that is embarrassed at how consuming it was, but everybody, I, well, a lot of people experience love and like the, the grips of it and it not working out and, so I feel like people could relate, but when I think about my own experience, there's a part of like a part of me that feels like almost like shame mm. that it was so consuming. Nah. So that's why like putting out the project. Sometimes when I think about it, it feels like oh, like should I have said that? Should I let people f like feel my lowest moments? Like should I have talked about that? But at the same time, people keep validating me that like oh yo, I went through this or da da da. da. Like I I think that's what music people is. Where you're supposed to. But it's a weird, you know, it's a weird internal cycle where I'm still like, damn, like, yeah. So I want to show my wounds, you know. No, well, listen, I've I've felt all of those different feelings before, sitting at the edge of the bed smoking cigarettes, yes. like I can't sleep, and then it it just fades away after a while. Mm-hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You start living life again. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I dig it. Let's let's get off of relationships. We're in this beautiful cottage mansion i don't even know what to call it i know you show me a little bit more of this layout over here let's let's let's, let's yeah. see this place actually, here actually there's some like dope outdoor spots we could like we could like smoke one out there you know like let's do it here there's a bit yeah let's see what's up i'm down That's a change, it's hot. Yeah. Hot day. This, this is this is beautiful. So speaking of vibes, right? That song main character. There's a bar I want you to break down for me and like how you were feeling around that time. Huh. Right? Bottom of the earth with the album of the year. So break that that bar down to me. I guess it's just like, I was feeling like, on one hand, like my life was like really doing this, like the trajectory was going up. Mm -hmm. And things were really positive, opportunities were coming to me. Obviously the line album of the year is winning that, you know, the Juno. Yeah. It's just a play on that, but then at the same time, not feeling like I'm reaping the benefits at all, like internally not feeling like truly happy about it because there's something else that's just like tainting everything yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so that it's just two feelings at once like cognitive dissonance whatever they say yeah that duality is like you're like in two places at the same time yes sir it was yeah it was tough but yeah i guess like that ended up fueling the next the next project so it's yeah. the next album you know so yeah and also you being sick I remember I'm looking on, I don't know if it was Twitter or Instagram, and I seen you posting from the hospital. And I was like, damn. Yeah. All right, you, you care to share, like, you know, a little bit of what was going on in those times? Like. Yeah, I don't know. It was a crazy time. I was, like, on the road. I was just feeling, like, not well, like, not okay. Cause, yeah. like, had to cancel the show. I don't ever cancel shows, you know? And I came back and went straight to the hospital, didn't even go home, and they, were able to, I don't know, they found, I had a blood infection somehow. 
Wow. Don't know, don't know how it happened or like, just I had a blood infection. Mm -hmm. And by that time it like moved to my heart and it's like something called endocarditis. So I had like an infection of the heart and then it like moved to my brain. I had brain strokes. Wow, so, that's scary. And I didn't even know. Mm. And at that time, like my project dropped like in that time that I was. Yeah, right in that same time, like right before you went and got sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I found out like what was going on like right around the time it was dropping. And at that time, they had to do all sorts of tests, make sure I didn't get like an aneurysm or anything, just because of wow. the brain activity and stuff. Like it was, it was kind of crazy for a short period of time. Like mm -hmm. it was very concerning. And yeah. like, yeah, the symptoms were pretty concerning. Like starting to have double vision and stuff like that. Like it was starting to get crazy. So it was just like really good to take that time and then like recover. Yeah. Like, truly recover. And I feel like in the end, it actually took like, I don't know, it actually took like six months to a year to like fully recover. Really? Even right now, like I just started getting into the gym again and mm -hmm. like working out, staying physically fit. And like that's still like the the heart, like just like that as a muscle. You still don't feel 100%? No, not 100, but like every other way, like when I'm playing shows, like it doesn't affect, like I'm out, I'm out there like, you know, like running these tunes, but yeah, when I'm playing like ball or like just hard intensity, like mm -hmm. I still notice it, but like, you know, I'm starting to retrain that now and like get myself right. You know? uh, that's blessed. That's blessed. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm glad that you're, you know, you're getting back to recovery. And and one thing, like I post you on my Instagram, right? I oh, see, um, oh, soft. That's, that's just my pleasure, you know. But when I see when I post you and other blogs post you, I go into comments, and one thing I see, all the time from blog to blog, she's an industry plant, right? Yeah. Do you see? Have see you seen that. these comments? Hundred percent. Can you answer to these comments that these, these, these allegations that people are always saying that Hawaii nah, Mighty's an industry plant? It's just funny because an industry plant has to be supported by the industry. Like I'm, mm. a, I'm an independent artist. I have my little team. We do our thing. I'm not signed to any major. This is true. I feel like in order to be an industry plant, you inherently have to be signed to a major. You have to be tapped into the money that con like that controls whatever messaging that they want. Mm -hmm. I'm not a struggling artist. I feel like we've achieved a lot of success. Definitely. But at the same time, like I'm an independent artist. I don't have the resources that a major would come with. Yeah. You know, like, you know, built-in streams and like super crazy budget for videos. I just think we're really smart. Like in this country, like we're smart with the money. In this country, in Canada, you can apply for grants. You can apply for, for money for the art. So I feel like it's hard work and effort. Like mm -hmm. I've applied for, I've applied for many, many, many grants, and didn't get them. Like in the beginning, like I've been putting out music since 2009. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I've been active. I remember getting my first like world star hip hop look, and I remember like linking up with producers in the city off of the strength of the little social media push. I've been putting out records. Like I'm on my eighth record now. Like, mm. Christmas is my eighth project. So the things that I've been doing have afforded me like. The grants that I'm getting, like it's really the product, it's the music at the end of the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, either you got, you gotta have funding coming in from somewhere. Either you like work in a job, or you get in through the streets, or mm -hmm. you're signed to a major, and then they kind of pay for your product, but then they own a lot of that product. Right. Or you know, you 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 take advantage of the business infrastructure wherever it is that you're at. The business infrastructure in Canada allows for you to apply for money for the arts. Yes. But you're not gonna get it if your art is not a representation of quality. I don't know. They earned that. Yeah. They I think you that. earned it. I, I know. I I've been it. watching you work. I've been seeing your trajectory from the time you started putting out music back in the days with the sorority to now. I, I could see the work. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, you know, um, continuing on the album, right? Is that your dad that popped up on that song, Honey Bun? Yes, sir. That's Pops. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and you know, we, we spoke about the family in the first interview, right? And, you know, Jamaican Pops and, and Moms, right? Or no, Moms from mom, Barbados. My mom is Bayesian, yeah, my dad yeah. is Jamaican. Yes, right, so, right. Yes. So, like, how was that now, getting him on the album? Did he get to hear the album before? And Nah, nah, he definitely did not. Um, and I, it wasn't a necessity. Like, I feel like they trust me in my music. Mm -hmm. They've been big supporters of my music, like, from young. Like, I was seven years of singing lessons before I even started doing this rap stuff, you know? Yeah. Which they supported. So, 
yeah, I feel like they're just, you know, happy to see me doing my thing. And I feel like his intellect, his, like, you know, his teachings, the way that he just thinks mm -hmm. is infused into a lot of the, the art that I create. So it was just, like, natural to be like, yo, Pops, like, what do you think about this topic? What do you think about this subject? Yeah. And I just record him on the iPhone, like, you know, then afterwards I'm like, yo, I was recording you. Like, so it's, like, authentic. He's not even realizing that he's being recorded because he's just, he's got a lot of wisdom. You yeah. Know? And I feel like I take a lot of that from him. Like... Even with you, you like you, you make music, you, you DJ, you, you're such a creative person, right? And you're and you're gaining success with the music now. Where do you see yourself like ten years from now, right? Is there only music involved in that journey, or is there a whole bunch of other things that you're going to be adding into your career path in that ten year mark? Yeah, I feel like music alone would be maybe a little bit one dimensional, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like one thing that this album helped me do, like by tapping into my internal self is like learning like what I like, like in, yeah. in order to be happy with the silence, I had to learn like what I like about me and about my, my alone time. And mm -hmm. like, you know, what gives me happiness and joy outside of like this craft. Cause you know, this has become my job. Making music is a thing that I have to do. Like I, I don't have to, but I feel compelled, like yeah. a calling to like make music, you know? So at the same time I need other things, you know? So I like, you know, is it going to be cooking? Is it going to be working out? Like, I don't know. Like, there's so many things that life has to offer. Traveling, like, not for work, you know? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I definitely think it would be one-dimensional to think, like, I won't explore other things. Like, I won't act or I won't. Yeah, I can see that. You know, produce or, like, you know, I like the behind-the-scenes, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's great to be at the front, like, always, like, front and center. But, like, I like to be in the background, too, and do production. Like, I produce for... A TV series and like I've produced Ooh. for commercials before and like done just the the production or just the vocals. Or, yeah. Or I, I record another artist and like I'm creatively directing the sound. Like all of these different bags I've kind of like tapped into. So I want to be able to do more stuff like that and maybe even on a you know a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to that. You know. Music will always be the fundamental though. Like I feel like that's that's the here. that's the base. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's where you started. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I can see so many, so many things in the future for you with just the amount of talents that you've already shown us. Like, I'm like, I know you guys so much more in your bag. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think we, we got to cover a lot of ground in here in our conversation. We're taking some of this nature and, you know. It's hot though. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's hot though. Take the dewy off. <laughs> Let's take it inside. <laughs> Let's do it, yo. Yeah. Ah. Back to home base. Yeah, that nice AC. Uh. Ah. So, there's a couple more things I want to get into before we wrap our conversation here. It's a two part question. Being a woman in this rap game and being Canadian in this rap game can be a super uphill battle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So have you ever felt, feel like giving up? And if so, what do you do to bring yourself back again, again motivate yourself again? Yeah, that's a good question. Hmm. Have I ever felt like giving up? Yeah. I feel like maybe momentarily, you know, like, but nah, not really. So like, yeah, maybe I have, mo I don't think the moments are like giving up. I think it's like, how am I gonna, like, how do I figure this out? Or like, how's this gonna go? Like nervousness or anxiety is over. Like, yeah. if I drop a song and the vibe is like this, how are people gonna receive it? But I'm still gonna like drop it. Yeah. Um, I guess it's a good thing that I like to challenge myself. You know, I like to, even if it makes me nervous, like I'm still gonna like do the thing and like see what the results will be. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I have that trait because it just keeps me going. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, just to circle back to our Juno conversation also, right? Um, once again, like, that show, amazing. Congratulations yes, on the nom. Right? <laughs> there was a big debate going on about nominations and who should have been nominated for a Juno, hmm. right? Hmm. Um, there's a, I remember that. Yeah. Like, a bunch of different names are being thrown around in the pot, right? What do you think of that whole conversation there? Like, do you feel that there was the, the, the proper nominations in there? My personal opinion? Yeah. Yeah. 
I personally think that the nominations were a good representation of what people were listening to that year. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I saw the controversy. Like, I think there's like a debate of like, oh, like how could, like really, like I think it's just me, people putting me against other artists where their, I don't know, I guess their marketability, like their streams are higher. Like that's where the bag comes from and it's right. very visible in that way. And yeah, I think for some people like, yeah, if, if you want those artists, there. well, yeah, I just feel like if you want those artists to win, like, one of my main goals as an artist is to represent myself. Mm -hmm. So if I'm represented in a category, like I know how hard I've worked, so of course I'm gonna think it's valid that I'm, you know, that's what I work towards. Definitely. If you wanna see other artists be nominated for Junos or see other people win, like, you know, get in the jury, get yeah. behind the scenes, like make sure your voice is heard. Like, I don't know who's on the back end, but I do know that like, a couple of years ago, I, even I wasn't being represented in these categories. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, and I, you know, maybe there's a shift on the back end that's happening. I'm on the front end making the music, trying to talk about different themes, trying to like bring like n different narratives that are, that are newer. So I think, yeah, my contribution to those categories are obviously going to be a little bit more niche. And I think that's expected. But at the same time, do I think I should have been no nominated? Do I think I should have won? Like, absolutely. Like, I don't doubt that for a second. So. Again, like the chatter, like people talking, like, I think it's a good thing. Like, I think the discussion is good. And I feel like people having differing opinions or wanting to hear different styles of music or resonating with content that is different, I yeah. think that's good. And that's it. Like, I feel like people creating space for other artists or wanting to see like expansion, like this industry is not just about me. I think that's dope, you yeah. know? No, there's so many different styles and I would dare I say genres within the genre of hip hop. There's room for everybody. Yeah. You know what I but mean? like as a as a as a female artist, of course, like that's something that we deal with like for a long time. Mm -hmm. And even still, like it's like there can only be one. Like we don't have that with male rappers where it's like if one person occupies a space, no one else can. Like it's just yeah. not like that. But for women for a long time it's been like that. So I feel like it's something I've always had to face. It doesn't feel like an uncomfortable space necessarily for people to kind of like be like, you don't belong here you, or you're not valid or like what you have to say, nobody's listening or the streets are, you know, the streets aren't listening or whatever. Like, yeah. I feel like, yeah, like that's something that's gonna come with the territory it always has as an underdog. But at the same time, like going back to your other question, like these things don't, like they don't deter me from doing the thing. Like it's more mo motivation than anything else. Yeah, fuel yeah. the fire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I love it. And and with everything that you got going on now, right? I'm sure that you have the next. You're you're probably planning to New Year. We're probably already into the next summer. Like, can we? I wish you know, I was that far ahead. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> right? are, are you in the studio? Do we got the next album already in the um, tuck? What, what yeah, you, you, know. you got coming up, going on, and what's going on next? Look, we're working on like getting the current music that a lot of people haven't heard like out. Like, mm -hmm. how do I get overseas? How do I get like across the border doing the music, the, the new music? I think that the focal point is just making more space for the shit that we, that we made. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like as I'm moving, I'm always trying to like create, I feel like I'm just getting that spark again. Cause I just dropped the project like a couple weeks ago, like just about a month ago at this point. Yeah. You know, so it's fresh and like, I'm excited about it. We've already started performing it, mm -hmm. you know, and like about to take it to, like I said, like Germany and New York and all these different things. And like, that's really exciting. But one thing I find is like, whenever I put a project out, by the time the project comes out, I feel like my skill level usually has like already leveled up what yeah. I'm putting out. Cause time has passed while you're doing distribution and focusing on the business side, like even two, three months, like it could change your it could change your, your theme or your voice or your whatever yeah. in so many different ways. So And music changes. The, the music changes, like the trends change, like what you're interested in changes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I already feel like what's in my head is like different than what I just put out. So yeah. it's cool because it's just like this cycle of like what's next. But for me, like whatever's next always like starts with like living. So like just do, do your thing, like, you know, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now is just like living, getting this like retreat space and like just like really like living in that, basking in that, like, 
you know, for the first time I'm going out and people are like know me for what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like a cool, like exciting thing when I go out and they're like, oh, yo, I heard this song or like I hear my song at a party. Like that's just new, you know? So you have to make time for that balance, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like trying to do stuff like this more like that's, you know, currently where I'm at in the next week, you know, we back at a party or, you know, we hosting something or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it flows. Last question. Last question. You're doing everything, you're, 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 you're I feel like you're getting to, to live your dreams one day at a time. Yeah, I think so too. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm happy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I, in my mind, I want to like, I want to start long talking it like, oh, because this and like, oh, this happened and da, 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 da. But like, yeah. I don't even have to validate it. Like, I'm, I'm definitely happy now. Yeah, that's all I needed. Listen, yo, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me here. Yes, sir. Having this conversation with you. Yeah. Uh, inviting me to this just amazing, tranquil setting. You know, we get, to, get our thoughts out and just really have a conversation rather yeah. than an interview. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Just like, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming all the way out here. Like, this has been, yeah, just something different, you yeah. know? not just in a studio or whatever, like, we out here in nature, we out here, like, you know? I appreciate it. No, we have to appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir.